Hello everybody, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. It really means the world to me that I'm making a video at 20,000 subscribers. I think I've mentioned it like three or five times since uh, I hit 20K, but it like hit me by surprise because I wasn't keeping up with it for a while and I can't believe I'm here talking to 20,000 of you. Anyway, I'm, I had this video idea like a month ago, but we're in the middle of move which is why I'm on the floor. I'd love to tell you guys that I have everything put together and I have my office space finished and my shipping stuff finished, but I'm not. So I'm looking at a laptop sitting on the floor right now. So um, I apologize for not being super professional, but have I ever been professional? I wanna show you guys this, a gas station soda. I see so many, cause I watch a lot of other resellers in I just don't know how they keep their shit together. Like, especially the ones with children. Like, how do you have pretty glasses to drink out of in your videos? <laughs> Sorry for that. I had this video idea like a month ago and it took me forever to execute it like it always does. Um, but I was gonna tell you guys like my most expensive sales ever. So I went and filtered Poshmark, Etsy and eBay and I looked at like my highest ticket sold items but everything that was coming up was like very self-explanatory things like Johnny Was jackets and Chanel heels and stuff that really wouldn't be giving you guys any information that you don't already know and one thing about my videos is I really like to uh, I mean I'm not the most educational person in the world don't get me wrong but I really like to tell you guys as resellers about things that you may not already know about that way, even though I like to have fun in my videos and I like to do a lot of rants and stuff like that, you know, I still like to plant seeds of like tips and brands that will actually help you in the long run. So I decided to do a video of surprisingly high ticket sales. Um, and by high ticket, I mean like old, like, should, should I even use the word high ticket? I just mean like surprisingly good sales. Maybe I'll call it that, surprisingly good sales. Things that you may find at a thrift shop, a state. I think most of you guys know, especially those of you who do 90s vintage. Most of you guys would know to pick this up. Um, however, I was going to pick this up and just, I wouldn't have paid more than $6.99 for it at a thrift shop. If I saw it there for $6.99, I'd look at it and be like, yeah, it could probably bring me like 25, 30 bucks, but I don't wanna pay up for it. So I I'd have left it behind. Um, I actually did buy it because I think it was from the bins. I was about to list it for like 30 bucks and something told me, I'm like, I, I better look this one up just to be safe, which I'm terrible at doing when it comes to vintage 90s stuff, which I need to start. And I looked up the comps and they were like between a hundred and $200. It's just Looney Tunes. Like the tag doesn't have a specific brand. It just is a Looney Tunes tag. Um, but this sweater style, like their 90s, 80s even sweater styles um will sell usually for over 100 this one sold for 124 dollars i think i was sitting on it for maybe 24 hours before it sold so definitely pay up for that if you find one similar um this one was surprising because i have a lot of good sweater brands um i'm trying to think like irish scottish danish stuff like that. Like you think of like Air and Craft sweaters and usually they sell for, you know, good amounts because it's pure wool and, you know, they just have good reputations. Um, it's Dale of Norway. It's a brand that I've probably heard of, but I probably also wouldn't have paid up for if I saw a Dale of Norway a year ago at a thrift shop and someone, and they had it for $12.99, I probably would have been like, nah. Um, looked up the comps and the newer labels sell for like, sometimes over a hundred. This one I listed at 95 and it sold very quickly. Very quickly for me is like under two weeks. So Dale of Norway. Um, this one is surprising. So this one sold for $70 on Etsy. It is a double-sided vintage handmade pottery bowl, um, probably from the 1980s. So how, this was unmarked. Um, so how did I know it was from the 1980s? Um, which is, something that a lot of people who sell vintage on Etsy, you know, you kind of have to like take the risk that you, there is a slight chance you could be wrong. I mean, like 
You guys remember when that, I'm not, never mind. I'm not going to give you guys story time, but there have been many times when even like historians and like antique experts have like dated things wrong. So sometimes you just have to trust yourself and know not to second guess yourself. There, at, there have been times where I initially thought something was like 1970s, 1920s, and then upon further inspection, I was wrong. Obviously, I corrected myself before I listed it. This specific piece, I was looking at abstract pottery. I spent a long time, like probably an hour and a half, just going through Google images of like pottery styles um, that came and went. Um, so anyway, that is how I dated this to 1980s. Now, it, does that really matter? Probably not. I'm sure the person who paid $70 for this paid $70 for it because they loved the fact that it was really cool, really chunky, and very 1980s-esque anyway. Um, however, they paid 70 bucks for it. And normally, I, I would tell you guys, don't pick up unmarked pottery. It's just a hard sell. But this is one of those pieces where it catches your attention and you just, I just knew. Um, I've had, you know, based on my customer base, I should say, I just knew that this would be a quick sell and sure enough, it was. Um, so, you know, keep your eye out for this kind of like 1980s crazy face abstract like line work face style um some people might pass that up i'm glad i didn't what else do we have here oh this one is really cool just because it's not something that definitely not something that i would have ever expected to get this much out of um this sold for 60 dollars uh 1960s 1970s red wicker purse if i picked up every single 1960s to 1970s wicker or basket or purse in general that I found, I'd be sitting on probably thousands and I'd be moving about 15 to 20% of them. This one, however, when I saw it, I just knew there was somebody out there who would like that pinup style or, you know, that very shabby, I hate using the word shabby, I can't explain it, like red poppy Kate Spade shabby style. Um, so I listed this one at $60 thinking it might sell at that price, but I also may just accept some offers, but it sold and it sold pretty quickly. So um, this is something that I can't just tell you guys like, oh, pick up a 1960s wicker purse and it's going to sell. You just kind of have to have an eye for it. But if you see one that is like the picture above my head somewhere, it's and you can authenticate that it is vintage. Um, you know, don't sell yourself short by listing it at 20 or 25 bucks, like mark it up, you know, 40 bucks, 50 bucks, maybe 60 if it's the exact same one. So these are sizzle pants from early nineties, sizzle pants, uh, jogger, harem, harem, whatever style pants, sizzle by Michael Scott. So my pants just said sizzle. They had no other tag on them. It was just, uh, I couldn't, I might be able to find like a reference image online um, or I could just scoop it out of my order info. Um, so the sizzle label is just a black label, usually on the front or back band of the pant and it just says sizzle. It may say sizzle by Michael Scott. I would have picked these up anyway um, I mean, 1990s crazy pattern pants, like obviously that's a pickup. However, I had no idea until I looked them up that this specific pant brand sells very well. I sold these for $70 and they went to someone in Japan, which makes them even cooler. So if you see sizzle pants, don't be afraid to pay up for them. This one is probably not super surprising. But I think the price point may be a little bit surprising to some of you guys. So this is a 1960s carpet and fake fur jacket. So I sold it for $138. That is the surprising point. So every time I see these 1960s, 1970s carpet and fake fur lined, like completely lined, I mean like trim, you wanna see the big puffy arms, you wanna see the big puffy hood. Every time I see those, I pick them up and they always sell. Um, this one I knew would sell for more than the regular colored ones because it had a really, it was just a really nice color. Uh, so what I listed in the title that I think really helped the sale was I listed it as Hollywood Hippie Rock, Janice Joplin. You can even go as far as putting Cher, but I think definitely like Hollywood 1960s Hippie Rock, Janice Joplin, 
you know, whatever else you want to put with it that just kind of puts you in the scene of that time because that was really like where this was popular and this was, you know, that was kind of how it was captured, like in memory. Like when I see this cult, I wasn't even alive back then, obviously. But when I see this cult, like that's where my mind went. So a lot of people looking for this specific style will type in things like that, trying to find, because if you just look up 1970s fake fur coat, like you're going to get so many different styles. But this specific style was very in the Hollywood rock scene at the time, which underground culture, you know, people love that kind of stuff this one is really cool um this is something that i went to a thrift shop with my reseller fiance who's been doing this longer than i have and i always feel like he knows more than i do when it comes to hard goods we were at the thrift shop and i was going through clothes as always he went through all the hard goods and i was like find anything he's like no i didn't find anything good to sell and this was like a really big thrift shop so i'm like you didn't find like a trinket that you can flip real quick for like 20 bucks he's like no not really I went through it within like five minutes and I came back with this and I was like, Michael, like you missed a really good item. And he's like, what that? It's a music box. Um, I think like 1990s nursery music box. Um, this specific style is like mod for the time. Um, the, this company, Covalias, they're located in Greece. So... I'm going to include a picture of the label because they do have Kovalias on some of their toys. They don't just make music boxes. They make toys. A lot of primary colors for one. A lot of color block. A lot of just create. I mean, look at this. It looks like an atom that exploded. Just a really cool design. People will pay up for certain pieces. Um, I sold this one for $62.75, which was on the lower end of the comps. Uh, I believe this exact piece has sold for like $90 before, but I was ready to get rid of it quickly. Um... Sometimes the Kovalia sticker will either be peeled off or it does not have one. So it will just say made in Greece. And if you find that, you really have to like use your sense of style to figure out like, is this a real Kovalias piece? Um, so, I mean, obviously the style is striking. So I hope you guys can remember, you know, if you see something like this, it's definitely worth picking up. Um, okay, this one's cool. Triple Fat Goose, F-A-T. Um, triple Fat Goose... My fiance was alive in the 90s. I mean, I, I was technically alive for part of the 90s, but he was actually thriving in the 90s because he's older than me. And he told me about this brand. Um, he was like, oh, it was all the rage. Like all the stupid rich kids wore it. Sorry if that term affects any of you negatively. Um, if you are a stupid rich kid, I must be nice. But anyway, he was like, yeah, they all used to wear it. It's called Triple Fat Goose. Sometimes it just says F-A-T. Um, really popular in the 90s. They use goose down obviously um this piece i sold for 142 dollars i think i did sit, sit on this one for a while but obviously it was worth sitting on um so if you find triple fat goose do not be afraid to pay up for it because i mean 142 bucks it's just a black like parka oh here's a good one h bar c h bar c ranch wear of california this is vintage also um, this is, so usually when I find Western vintage shirts, I will comp search them regardless, as long as they're vintage and have some sort of like Western feel to them because people will pay up for vintage Western ranch wear. Um, I sold this one for $34. I can't see the price here, but I know it was between 30 and $35. Um, like I said, it's, it's a really plain brown piece, just a little bit of embroidery at the shoulders, nothing special. Uh, something that three years ago, I would have went right past because it doesn't look special. It doesn't look, you know, too vintage. You know, if something like predates 1950, I don't give it, I don't care what brand it is because it's worth picking up. Um, this, however, I, I just had a good feeling about, I looked it up and I was like, some of the really cool patterns can go for like a hundred bucks. So look up H bar C, um, get that image in your head. It's worth picking up to resell at a decent price. And this, this is actually my last one to show you guys. So free people. Um, I know you guys know like certain brands like Lululemon pieces, even though Lululemon is going downhill right now, um, certain pieces are sought after and you can still get like $150 for them, I'm sure. Let me know what those pieces are because I have no idea. This free people trucker jacket I picked up paid $5.99 for it, I think. And I'm like, you know, it's cute. It's a trucker jacket, free people. Can't really go wrong. I mean, you can go wrong with free people, but as far as like the style, I was like, yeah, this seems newer. 
Um, so my gut instinct was to list it between $40 and $50, uh, but I decided to look up. See, I need to start comp searching better because this is where I almost made a big mistake. I decided to look up Free People Quilted Jacket and the Quilted Dolman Jacket is what it's called. It came up and I was like, so it's a sought after piece because it's sold out. Trucker jackets are in. I don't know why else. Probably, but I knew that it was obviously sought after because I was looking at the comps and I'm like, that's probably what it cost new. I think, yeah, it says $198 new and I sold it for $118 used. Like usually when you walk out of the store with something, even if it's brand new with tags, you instantly lose like 50 to 70% of the value the minute you leave the store with it, even if it's brand new with tags. So obviously that's like a special sought after style. So if you see this free people jacket and they have it marked at like 25, even $30, I'd pick it up. This is another one of those things for like people who do online exclusive reselling where they order things um, on Poshmark, Mercari, and eBay. Uh, and then they just flip them literally sitting at home on the computer and just take better photos of them. This is something that I would look out for, the Free People Dolman jacket. So that is actually my last piece. Um, I hope this was a little bit informative for you guys. I know sometimes it's fun just to see different things. Most of this was all vintage but that is, that's my sweet spot. So anyway, if you guys made it this far, as always, I love you so much. You are sweet, precious angels. I wish you the best in life. You're my best friends. And I don't have a circle of friends, so you guys are my people. And I really appreciate you being here today. So if I could get any more corny, I would, but I can't. Um, I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description to my Instagram, which is honey.rags. From there, you are welcome to go mosey about on my website and go check out my facebook um honey rags on facebook thank you so much for watching happy thrifting happy selling and stay safe